What is the most embarrassing thing you could admit about yourself on Reddit but never in real life? About a month ago I was walking down the sidewalk in Brooklyn when a group of high school kids on a school bus yelled hey, what up, B and other obscenities at me during a red light. I turned my head and yelled out I frick your mother back at them. They stopped for a moment, seemingly taken aback by what I had said. You frick my mom one of them asked, and I, while still walking down the sidewalk said yes, I do. They became even more silent as they stared at me walking, suspiciously silent. Just as I turned my head back towards the direction I was walking and I slammed my face into a pole and the entire bus erupted in laughter. The one kid had successfully stalled me from seeing the pole in front of me by repeating my comment back to me as a question and then simply watched me as I watched him watch me walk into a metal pole. The light turned green and I could hear their laughter down the street. That kid deserved to win and I hope he never forgets that moment because I probably won't. This is my favorite. Nothing but pride seriously hurt and you had me laughing out loud. Great story. I pulled a muscle in my back while wiping my butt at work. Had to file workman's comp and couldn't crawl out of bed for two days. Up until I was 18 I believed that if your hand was bigger than your face you had cancer because my cousin never finished the prank on me. He told me this when I was 9. The long con. I thought cantaloupe was some sort of animal from Australia. Cantaloupe, an antelope with a negative attitude. I walk my dog late at night so I can spend a solid hour dancing as I go and no one will see me. I think I'm a happier man because of this. I used to hump the floor as a kid before I knew what master bashing was. I had no idea why it felt so good. I was shocked and concerned the first time jizz came out. But that didn't slow me down. Female here. I did the same. When I was younger I had a bunch of superhero trading cards. I used to take the female ones and put them in my pants. In the front. So they'd touch my penis. I like how you went on to describe why. My bladder can hold gallons of pee. I can go on for minutes. It's because I was too scared to use other toilets than the one at home when I was young. It adapted. Now I'm bladder man. In the year once, the nurses had to insert a catheter because of other reasons. They had to switch out the initial bag. And the final measurement was over 2L. I have a freaking soda bottle inside of me. A couple months ago I decided to take on the challenge of orgasming without touching. I was doing pretty good and was on the verge of cooming but then I just pee myself instead. My boyfriend and I had never even farted in front of each other. But that was before our anniversary. My boyfriend took me out to an extremely classy and expensive restaurant for our one year anniversary. I was wearing a little black dress and somehow mentioned that I wasn't wearing anything underneath. The great food and about $100 later, we were getting ready to leave. My boyfriend whispers in my ear that he can't wait to get me home and I agree. About 10 minutes away from his house, I start feeling nauseous. And like I need to take a huge dump. I tell him I don't feel good and to speed home. About 2 minutes later, I can't take it anymore so I tell him he needs to pull over. He asks if I needed a bag while I'm writhing in pain and I scream I need to get out or I am going to crap myself. He immediately stopped. I ran into the woods and explosively die head everywhere followed by throwing up my entire expensive dinner. To make matters worse, I car came around the corner and probably saw me with my dress hiked up around my waist crapping in the woods. Needless to say, when I got back to the car my boyfriend was as pale as a ghost and didn't know what to say to me. As I got in the car, he hands me a towel and says this is to sit on since you're not wearing any underwear. When we got to his house, I immediately went to bed, alone, saying that I was still nauseous when in reality I was so embarrassed that I didn't want him to see me cry. The only person I have ever told this story to is my mom and I will never tell it to anyone. When asked about how the date went I reply that it was a perfect night. My girlfriend once farted on my dong when we were sleeping while cuddling. Like, a powerful, loud one. I was only semi asleep because I hate cuddling, and it surprised the frick out of me. I shot up straight, and her head shot up halfway with me since it was resting on my arm. She didn't wake up, not even a half asleep groan. I laughed a lot, then turned around and went to sleep. 
When I was 8 I got a boner and didn't know what to do with it. So I stuck it in a glass of water and remember thinking. Well that sucked. I don't exactly know how to make out with someone. I have two pee holes on my pecker. Only one works. Throw away here. 11.5 years ago my father died in the middle of the night, probably due to a burst cerebral aneurysm. There was no effort to discover the true cause because there really wasn't any point to it. It was over in about 15 minutes. I'm a single child, so it was me and my mom left. The next year or so I would get up during the middle of the night and quietly go to my mom's room and stand near her bed and watch her chest if she's breathing. Essentially if she is alive. I would stand there motionlessly in the pitch black night for, like, 3-5 minutes, until I was sure she is okay and then I would go back to bed. I was really scared of losing her too. Frick man. That's really terrifying. I'm sorry. I thought I was bit by a deadly spider conveniently on my bag. I had a panic attack and went to the ear because I was obviously dying. So I'm laying on a bed in the ear with my legs spread and no pants and the nurse is like, yup, definitely an ingrown hair. Before I knew what down syndrome was I thought I just saw the same guy everywhere. My stepsister has down syndrome and she lives with her mom on the beach and walks everywhere so she's very tan. When I first met her I mistook her speech for an accent and her tan to mean she was a different race. Keep in mind I was pretty young but as we were driving home I asked my mom is Kathy Asian and my mom had to pull over because she was laughing so hard. One time in college, I really liked this girl and wanted to tell her as much. On Wednesdays, we went to the on campus club to dance and I was going to tell her there and ask her out. I told her I wanted to talk to her that night. I told her friends I was going to tell her. I got dressed to the nines. Then I lost my nerve. I kept running back to the dorm and making a screwdriver. Then again, then two, then three more, and I passed the heck out in the dorm common room. One of my friends came and got me, cleaned me up, and walked me to my room to put me to bed. The next morning, when I went downstairs to nurse a hangover and play Mario Kart with people, everyone tried to dance around telling me something. Finally, her best friend kind of blurted it out. The friend who put me to bed, and didn't know I had feelings for the girl, made out with her on the dance floor that night because she was really lonely. They've been together since. Man, I feel so bad for you. Repost. In 2006, I broke into my friend's dorm room while he was on vacation and jerked off on his keyboard because I knew he would never repay the $800 he owes me to this day. I tell everyone that I don't do Facebook, but I have a secret Facebook account that I only use to play who wants to be a millionaire. Alright, I have two secret Facebook accounts that I only use to play who wants to be a millionaire. I hate my father. And each year I get more like him. I was at a Coles trying clothes on because I was in desperate need as I had not gone shopping in a long time. I went to Coles because it's relatively cheap and I was going to be needing a ton of just basic stuff. I piled a buggy up full of clothes. There were at least 100 items I was about to try on and I had the buggy so the attendant let me use the large handicap changing room. Fast forward 5 minutes. I'm nude in between trying things on and the sensation to urinate hits me like it has never before. It was like instantly my body decided it had to pee and I had no control. There was nothing around me but piles of clothes and I was naked and had no time to figure something out. So there I went. I pee on what was probably easily over $1000 worth of merchandise. All. Over. It. So now I am basically a grown man. Almost in tears. No idea what to do. And the worst part is that my clothes got pee on too. I put my pissy clothes on and put my hand on the door lever. Ready to pounce out of there like a cat and run for the door. But just as I do. The attendant is knocking and asking if I need help because she heard something spill. I would never hit a woman but I shoulder check this be good and hard by accident during my furious mad dash for the door just in time to exit and hear. W-H-A-A-T the frick. There's pee everywhere. Stop him. I hid behind a dumpster for 30 minutes trying to figure my life out. Holy frick. That's some grade A nightmare material right there. I've named all the radiators in my house. This is a genuinely endearing character tray. 
When I was in year 10, 9th grade, for our transatlantic cousins, I was super obsessed with all the Illuminati conspiracies and I used to watch this series called The Arrivals about it, and I was of the mindset that I was free and not a part of the system because I was aware of all these conspiracies. I also had a reputation at school for being kind of a clown. One day at school, a professor from the University of Cambridge came to give a lecture and at one point he was talking about some notable alumni. As soon as he said the word alumni, my ears perked as I didn't know what it meant and it sounded very close to the word illuminati haha. <laughs> Nobody else seemed to notice this. I felt so smart and smugly interrupted the entire lecture, 200 people at least, with teachers as well, and said with the utmost confidence that only an idiot like me would possess excuse me. I couldn't help but notice that you used the word alumni, could you please elaborate on its definition? He stared at me for a few seconds with a blank, confused expression on his face and then told me what it meant before resuming the lecture. I kind of got away with it because nobody thought I could be that dumb and just attributed it to me being silly by interrupting the lecture and asking the definition of a mundane word people laughed and thought it was funny. But nobody knows why I said it and just how stupid I was being. It's the single most embarrassing moment of my life and it hurts me to think back to it, even writing this made me cringe ha ha ha. I'm married to someone who was a virgin and super naive innocent when we met. She has no idea how terrible I am in the sack and thinks it's normal that guys can't last more than a couple minutes maximum. It's bad. My ex and I have been broken up for 8 months. I just saw on Facebook he was in a new relationship and is visiting her in North Carolina right now. He's from Ontario. One of the reasons we broke up was because of long distance. I'm from Michigan. And when I saw that update, I pretty much immediately burst into tears and I've been devastated the rest of the day. And that is what I won't tell anyone in real life. I want to be a lumberjack. Dut. And that's okay. You'd work all night and sleep all day. When I was about 7 or 8 years old, I was having some entertainment once while my grandfather was sleeping after the lunch. I tried to be funny and farted in front of his nose. Karma exists. As I tried to fart as many times as possible into his sleeping face, I accidentally shat my pants. I found a kid who hung himself and I had PTSD as a result. Whenever the image would come up in my head, I would panic. But then I started to picture his body do a little dead dance wet noodle wiggle and now it makes me smile. You literally ridiculous your boggart, friend. Sorry you had to go through that but I love how you overcame it. I'm 18 and occasionally wet the bed. Being totally serious, I've heard that Kegel exercises can help with that. Despite it often feeling very, very good, it's difficult for me to finish during sex. My ex used to think it was their fault, but I'm pretty sure it's my anxiety medicine, which just makes me not want to take it anymore. It is the medication. Sadly, it's the biggest cause of stress in my 6Y relationship. I get bored and distracted and play the repopulate the earth game in my head in meetings. Who would I hook up with? Who would be left out? Who would lead the tribe? I just found out that the fetus I'm pregnant with never developed a brain and will die upon birth. Heart still beats because it has brain stem. I can't terminate because I'm past 20 weeks. Now, I just hope every day that it will die so I don't have to feel it move anymore. This is not embarrassing. You didn't do anything wrong. My heart goes out to you. I'm really very sorry. My doctor thinks I may have Asperger's. Given that my family seems to think Asperger's and mentally retarded are synonyms I'm not sure I'm going to ever follow up on it or mention it to them for that matter. You can follow up without telling your family. When you let things go undiagnosed, it does you more harm than good. Hey, some of my friends might even see this, but whatever. Minute man, not the soldier. I'm married, and it's not as big of a deal as I thought it would be, as, for round two. I'm always good to go, but if I haven't jerked it all day, and I have sex, I'm like, probably 2-3 minutes maximum. Usually we just do some foreplay first and then get to the sexing. That way everyone is happy. But yeah, I don't want to have that discussion with my friend's family. I live with the mother of my child and sleep in the same bed with her. 
I basically spend all my time with her. We act like a perfect family, and nobody would even suspect that we weren't in love. But we haven't had sex or even kissed since my son was born. Six years ago. My Asian name isn't even Asian. In fact, it's not anything. My parents just misspelt it. I went to high school with this awesome guy named Brownie. His parents were immigrants, and when he was born the nurse asked his parents what the name would be. His father wanted to name him after his boss, Brawny. The nurse couldn't understand his accent, and he will forever be Brownie. I still play Yu-Gi-Oh. I am totally over yu gi -Oh, Unless I watch episodes again, or find the cards at thrift stores, or when I'm dueling my brother, Frick. I'm in my mid-twenties, I don't know how to ride a bike. I once jerked off to a friend's panties. We were sharing a room in a hostel and I came back drunk one night and saw her panties on her bed. She's a stone cold fox and I couldn't help myself. I took a picture of her panties position on the bed, snagged them and went to town on myself in the bathroom. I returned them as perfectly I could and she was none the wiser. It's probably the most pathetic thing I've ever done. The part where you took a picture makes it seem like you do this a lot, like, you're a professional panty thief. I'm a guy and I pluck my pubes with my fingers. It's so freaking addicting. My groin looks smooth as frick but I have to pluck the tiniest of hairs if I spot one. My index finger has like a permanent dent hard skin because of it. Ah, trichotillomania. I'm a beard plucker myself. When hiding during hide and seek. I used to wet my pants from excitement that the game was about to start. It might still do so to this day. I haven't played hide and seek in a long time, but I've used this to my advantage to actually pee when I'm in a public restroom. Just start counting down from 5, works like a charm. Haha <laughs> WTF man. This is some funny crap. Up until a while ago I believed frogs weren't real because my parents told me it was a conspiracy when I really young. I never questioned them, and always thought the teachers were stupid for buying into that frogs are real. But they aren't a conspiracy and my parents played a long evil joke. I have a freckle on my penis. I understand it's relatively normal but it's not something I brag about. The freckle lies smack bang in the middle of my shaft. It is a dark brown color. And it is mostly oval shaped. If you run your fingers over it. Cute girls reading this. I highly recommend this activity. For science. Then you wouldn't feel it. It is very much a part of my skin. In fact. It's like one tiny part of me. On the shaft of my penis. Is brown. I wouldn't go as far to call me African American. However. As I'm very much white and Australian. But. As a child. It did make me wonder. Now. My older sister, let's call her Rebecca, is a twin, technically, but her twin died while it was still developing in the womb. So she's not really a twin. But, anyway, Rebecca has a mole on her neck. This mole, my mother used to say, was the undeveloped fetus. My childhood brain believed this to be the case, that, when people died, they detach their crumpled and tiny bodies onto other living beings as a slightly unsettling method of attaining immortality, and guide their living hosts through life. A little bit like a guardian angel. My grandmother used to work with indigenous Australians in remote communities in outback Australia. One day while at her house, she decided to go through her photo album. Most of these photos had three things in common. My grandmother, my grandfather, and a black man. I ask my grandmother who the black man is. That's Robert. Wadiniel. Well how come I've never seen Robert before? He's gone. Gone where? My grandmother paused for a moment. She wanted to say this delicately to her 6 year old. He's dead. Oh he died about the same time you were born. I asked my mother about this when I got home. She could confirm. Now, let's cast our mind back to two paragraphs ago and recall the belief that dead people attached themselves to the living. With this belief in mind, we shall head back to my penis. We should head to the little brown spot on my penis, to be exact. I came to a sudden realization that night in my bed when I got home. The brown freckle on my penis was a dead person. Robert was also a dead person, who happened to have dark skin. I put two and two together and came to the only logical conclusion. Robert is my phallus bound guardian angel. Our best after. I'm a freaking doormat. 
No matter what anyone does to me, I'll always help them. I will give the last dollar in my bank account to the guy who just shanked me in the kidney to get out of prison. It's really embarrassing to have the constant feeling that I'm nothing and I need to give everyone everything to feel even kind of validated. I know the feels. The worst is doing it, no matter who it is, then questioning if you're a bad person later for not wanting to give everything you have. When I was 20 I had a dream. A really really long one. I've dreamt of a girl my age. I met her at a bar. We talked. We liked each other. Over time it grew into something bigger and I was really happy with her. I woke up suddenly. Like seriously in my dream it all took months. Looking back at it I'm still not sure how it worked because it's as hazy as memories. But it influenced me more than a dream should. To this day 3 years later whenever I'm in public I look around hoping I might just meet her. It made me cynical and sad pretty much overnight. I wore a diaper until I was 5. I pee the bed until I was 12. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.